high in the next few weeks and uh, throughout much of the rest of the course we'll be uh, talking about light. I want to give an introduction to light and uh, as we understand light, it's a pretty complex phenomena. There's a couple different models we can use to try to understand it. And I want to go back and trace a little bit the history of light to see how some of those ideas developed. So Newton is famous for his three laws of motion, but he was also one of the first people to ever take a scientific study of light. And so one of the early experiments he did is he took a beam of white light through a hole, you know, in the room and sent it through a prism and he found that it spread out into different colors. This made Newton think that the colors were particles and that, you know, different colors would spread by a different amount in the prism. Uh, and so this kind of became an established theory, light is particles, because Newton was so famous. However, even Newton had some uh, phenomena that he couldn't understand. So another phenomenon uh, that you may be aware of is uh, Newton's rings, named after Newton himself, uh, whereas you have some white light shine off of a couple of microscope slides and you end up getting a pattern of uh, varying colors that reflect off. He was unable to understand this. Moreover, if you generally shine light, say of a fixed color, imagine a laser beam or something, at a, a slab of glass, the amount that's reflected depends on the thickness of the glass, as you can see here on the uh, horizontal axis. And it oscillates somewhere between 0 and 16 percent, and it depends on the color, which we know color is wavelength, right? This was something that was odd as well, and uh, it kind of has some, some uh, resemblance of an oscillation, even this picture, which makes us kind of believe this might have to do with waves. Turns out at the same time as Newton, there was uh, another guy, Huygens, in the 1670s who proposed a wave theory of light, but uh, he wasn't as famous and uh, no one really picked up on it. Later in the early 1800s, Young, and then especially later Fresnel, a French guy, um, they came up with a theory of wave interference to explain a lot of phenomena that was coming up. And uh, here's one example. If you have uh, some white light passing through two small needle points, if you look at a screen behind there, you'll see this interesting pattern that emerges. Uh, and this uh, is a pattern that we know occurs due to um, wave interference. It's, a, it's an interference pattern, which is a hallmark feature of, uh, of wave phenomena. And uh, shortly after, Maxwell in the 1860s, came up with his uh, famous uh, result that light is an electromagnetic wave, which we studied. Uh, however, shortly thereafter, the person who confirmed the wave properties of light, Hertz, he came up with another discovery called the photoelectric effect, which uh, didn't obey a wave description of light. And the photoelectric effect is this idea where if you shine light with a certain frequency, you can eject electrons out of a metal. Uh, but it turns out that uh, this wasn't uh, something that we could understand in terms of wave theory. We'll learn about this later in the class. Einstein was able to explain this in terms of uh, thinking of the light as being made up of chunks of energy, almost part particle-like, and uh, he gave an equation for the uh, energy of the light in terms of uh, a constant h, Planck's constant, times the frequency. So after Einstein, it was understood that you needed uh, sometimes to use wave theory to understand light, uh, but in other cases, you would need to use a particle theory. Let me show you uh, the most recent uh, theory, understanding of light, just for the fun of it. This is not one we'll study, but this is called quantum, electro quantum electrodynamics. This was uh, created by Feynman, Schwinger, and Tomonaga in the 1940s. Uh, so imagine you have a source of light here that you know emits rays of light in different regions. And we have a detector at point P. Basically, we're going to look at each path that this light could take to get to point P. And as it's traveling at the speed of light, we're going to go ahead and look at a little clock that spins around a dial. And uh, once it reaches the, the position at P, it stops in some orientation. We're going to look at that for all of these different possible paths, dividing up the mirror so it can reflect off of all these different positions. And we let the clock run. Notice that the length from S to P for the various paths differs, and so the clock is going to stop with the uh, hand at different positions. Now to get the uh, total probability of uh, the light traveling from the source S to the location P where it's detected, we need to add all these guys up as vectors. And when you do that, you'll find out that most of these guys and these guys all in opposite directions cancel, whereas in the middle, 
you get the biggest contribution to the vector here. And so the length of this final arrow, that's proportional to the probability that the light actually gets from S to P. Turns out that uh, the part that contributes the most is, the, uh, is along the paths that uh, have the shortest amount of time, which essentially are the ones that go like this. And you can kind of see that uh, we'll learn shortly that this is the uh, path that obeys what we call the law of reflection. So at the end of the day, we can ask the question, what is light? Well, we, ha we, we are only able to explain certain instances like a wave. Uh, some experiments will act like a wave. We'll use that description. We'll do that in chapter 27. Uh, in other cases, it'll act like a particle, and uh, we can use that description. So there's different models we can use. In chapter 25 and 26, we are going to uh, use what we call the geometric ray optics model, which uh, says essentially that we can uh, assume that light travels in a straight line from one point to another as long as it's traveling through a single type of material or homogeneous medium. Uh, and if it is going to bend, it's only because it reflects off of something. It passes from one type of material to another and gets bent, such as when light from air passes into the water. So uh, that's a basic summary of a lot of the ideas behind light historically and the models we have to explain it now. It's a complex phenomenon, but pretty fascinating, and we're going to be looking at it uh, starting this week.